I want to talk about a little example, a little research project that a student of mine did, a master's student, and she was comparing performance. She did a hangman game and she did it on an app, a mobile device, and she also did it on a computer, on a laptop, and you know, at a larger, a larger screen device. And she wanted to examine the performance the pre and people's preferences on these two different devices and she did it for a few reasons she did it as a within a within subject design where she had people use both she had everyone and she randomized some some people started with the computer experience and then switched over to the phone some people to the phone and then the computer and the reason she did is one um the number of participants we didn't have enough to do i think there might have been 60 and it's, if you divided that to 30 30 it wouldn't be as good as having 60 in each condition. So that was one reason we chose the within subject design. The other reason is we also wanted to ask people, which do you prefer and, and really get their preference. So we asked them another, besides for asking, what do you prefer? We also just wanted to, to analyze it ourselves. So we asked them to tell us one word, give us one word about their experience. And I put some examples, 10 examples below. So you can see the browser is the large on the desktop computer group and the phone was the people who are doing it on their phone. And, and, and it's the same person. But, um, but we said right after they did the task, we said, tell us one word to describe your experience. And you can see enjoyment, confused, interesting, boring. Um, and and um, if you read the ones on the phone, awesome, fun, fun, boring, hard. So now this is subjective data. How do we know if these are positive and negative words? Now, of course, some of these like awesome enjoyment they I would say most people would say these are you know positive words but sometimes hard you know is that might be or fine okay there's certain words that are they good are they bad um, and that might be a little subjective and so one way to do that is to have two different people code and and say whether they think it's positive, negative, or neutral. So you're not just relying on, you know, my opinion, and I happen to think fine is a good word, but you're not just relying on me and what I think, but you can have two people. And then if they disagree, you can solve these by discussions or by getting a third party. So um, so this, this is like different ways to analyze this kind of subjective qualitative data. So intercoder reliability it, or it, otherwise known as inter-rater reliability, refers to the extent they agree. So when you're reporting on it in a paper, you might say, well, these two graders agreed 90% of the time, or they agreed 80% of the time. And this way, you know, like how reliable it is, how did they disagree a lot, or did they have a lot of agreement? So the most common and the easiest one to do is percentage. And that's, let's say I had 100 cases and me and another coder and we agreed 80, 80, 80 times out of 100, that's 80%. It's very easy to do because we can all do percentage math and, and that's the easiest. Um, but there is a disadvantage of it that sometimes it could be by chance, you know, kind of like if you're taking a multiple choice test, sometimes you just get it right even if you don't know it. So it's kind of like a little bit, I might just be guessing and some of the time maybe we just agree by chance. So there's another method, which is a little better, which is the Cohen's Kappa, and it takes into a, a, a account this chance. So here there's a little bit of an equation, and of course I'm not going to test you on doing this. I just want you to understand it. Um, so you have this, the actual observed agreement is, you know, the A, and you have the the E, the expected agreement by chance. There's an equation, I'll, and I'll, I'll just show it to you. So here in the case of 10 positive or negatives and if me and my student you can see one of us is person a one of us is person b um you can run the positives across so so here you can see the positives you, you know a person you can see one of the people have positive four times the other one had positive five times which is half of the times they thought it was positive and actually the diagonal is, is the time they agree because positive positive you both agree negative negative you both agree neutral neutral you both agree and you can see that they agree nine out of ten percentage agreement would be easy 90 percent that math i can do in my head um now the other one that takes into account chance is a little trickier because it does well this person thinks positive you can say person A said positive 50% of the time, while person B said positive 40% of the time. So we multiply that together to get this, you know, random um, agreement by chance as 20%, you know, plus do the same thing for their negatives. One of them said, they, actually both of them said 40% um, negative. 
And then the neutral is a little different. One of them said 0.2 and one had 0.1. So we multiply that together. We add them all up and we get this 0.38. So now we have this um, total, this agreement by chance. What do we do with the 0.38? We plug it into this equation because we have the equation. We have our 0.9, which was our agreement, our percent agreement minus 0.38. And then we have 1 minus 0.38, and now we get something that's not as high as our 90% because it takes into account some of this chance, and we have a 0.83, um, and so this, this, you know, agreement. So that's how you would do it with Cohen's Kappa. Again, you're not responsible for all this. I just want to show you the different methods. And what you would do is, you know, sometimes you would, you wouldn't, let's say you had hundreds of cases. And you wanted to both do this. And you wouldn't necessarily then go and check out after 100 to see if you match up. Because what if you were all wrong? So you might do 10. And now, let's say we had those words, fine, okay. But now we come to some agreement. We see where, where we differences. We come to some agreement. And now we do another 10. And at this point, it's going to our differences are going to improve. Because we've already discussed it and now come to an agreement on what we think about the words, okay and fine. And now maybe we do this again a third time. Um, and at, at some point, if you keep doing this, you'll notice... You don't, you don't have disagreements anymore because you're on the same page because you've had so many discussions. So it's a nice method to do if you have a lot because at some point you can say, look, our, our agreement is already at, you know, 85% or whatever it is. Uh, we have a really high either percent agreement or Cohen's cap, but we have a really high value. Now, now we're fine. Let's just do it on our own. We trust each other. So that's a method where you can see um, you can get this, percent and this is a class activity I would have you do in class to see if you can keep meeting and discussing and see if you could get your disagreements down at some point.